Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and it's time to round out Patron Week with a request from this month's Quasar Commander, asking that I cover their favorite archetype, Lavals. Premiering in the August 2011 core set, Generation Force, in the TCG, Lavals actually began print in the OCG as part of the Dual Terminal line of packs, and thus is part of the longest, most involved series of stories the card game has to offer, something those of you who are familiar with my history of the Dual Terminal series will know. So far, we've been covering the events of Age 1.0, but the Lavals don't take the stage until Age 2.0, as a clan bent on showing off their martial strength through war, going so far as to provoke the Gem Knights multiple times, until the Steel Swarm show up, acting as a unifying enemy for all the tribes to come together and fight. Almost like how it worked out with the Worms! Hmm? In the card game proper, Lavals didn't see much tournament success, though were known as one of the best shells to take advantage of rekindling, making one of the most feared synchros of all times, shooting Quasar Dragon. And with recent support dropping for them in Ghosts from the Past and Lightning Overdrive, now's an excellent time to give these avatars of Molten Might some attention. We'll sample all the volcanic material the theme has, collect data on just how high these temperatures can rise, then see if there's any kind of spice we can add in. It's time to lab out Lavals. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and there's no better way to get there than on our Duel Runners. Our next stop is 30k, where we'll have Jack Atlas Explained, which includes Resonators, Red Dragon Archfiend, and whatever other cards were used by the Masta of Fasta! We've also got our Discord, which is a great place to be if you want to be the first to hear news of my plans at YCS Charlotte. Hope I'll see you there. I'm also on Twitch, where you can join me for viewer duels and progression polls pools, and don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which explained videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Lavals? Well, they're a series of fire attribute monsters who are primarily warrior or pyro type, though they are known to branch out from time to time. And they love the grave. They want to be sent there, they want to have as many as possible in the grave to meet effect activation conditions, and they want to banish other Lavals out of the grave for their effects. Which doesn't sound very synergistic, and that's before you realize we've got quite a few Laval support monsters that aren't themselves Lavals. That's Dual Terminal for you, always yanking us around with suboptimal card interactions. But enough complaining, it's time for explaining. Laval Volcano Handmaiden is a level 1 Pyro Tuner monster with 100 attack and 200 defense. And when this card is sent to the grave, if you have a Laval monster in your grave other than a copy of this card, you can send a Laval monster from your deck to the grave. This can get absolutely silly because nothing's stopping you from sending another Handmaiden. And since there's no hard once per turn, you can vent them all out of your deck at once if you meet the activation conditions. And that compounds if you can send multiple of them to the grave at once, since they can grab unique targets instead of having to daisy chain through the rest of the handmaidens. But be careful, this does miss timing, so sending them to the grave as cost or as synchro material won't work. Thankfully, we've seen a lot less cards that include the missing the timing mechanic over the years, so you could say that, moving forward, that problem's been addressed. Soaring Eagle above the Searing Land is a level 1 Winged Beast Tuner monster with 100 attack and 0 defense. And if this card is sent to the grave for a Synchro Summon, you can Special Summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. However, you can only activate and resolve this effect if you have 3 or more Laval monsters with different names in your grave. That's actually a pretty slick Synchro climbing tool. I could see someone gaining a lot of advantage by using a base Synchro for an on summon effect before going one rung higher for the real onboard threat. It doesn't even care what what kind of synchro monster it's used for, as long as you have the Laval engraved to set it up. But remember, despite the eagle being one of the most powerful birds of prey, you must be wary of the mischievous DD Crow. One of their effect activations and it could ruin the entire revival effect. When will the eternal rivalry between eagle and crow cease? 
Laval Kuwadl is a level 2 pyro tuner monster with 1300 attack and 700 defense. And if you have 3 or more Laval monsters with different names in your grave, you can special summon this card from your hand. Now, I like me some tuners that are easy to deploy, but I feel like this one's putting the synchro before the material if you catch my drift. Normally, you fill your grave by synchro summoning, or whichever summoning mechanic you want to use, and while the Laval specialize in filling the grave faster than a serial killer convention, it still feels like it should be helping to enable that while while being summoned, rather than having the summon be the payoff. And speaking of payoffs, Kawadal's gonna need quite a bit of cash to find a good chiropractor. How that tiny neck holds that huge head, I'll never know. Laval Forest Sprite is a level 2 pyro tuner monster with 300 attack and 200 defense, and when sent from the field to the grave, all face-up Lavals you currently control gain 200 attack for each Laval monster in your grave until the end phase. What I like is that Forest Sprite doesn't say the Lavals in grave have to have different names, so the more you can mill, the better your team can kill. And that boost adds up fast. Even just having 3 means a 600 point boost for your whole team, and that gets added to every Laval, so the total damage multiplies even faster. And because it's mandatory, this one can't miss timing, so use it as synchro material to your heart's content. And thankfully, if they ever need a place to relax after spending the day boosting their allies, they found the best vacation spot for those of a fiery temperament. The Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. KN, the Master Magma Blacksmith, is a level 3 rock monster with 1200 attack and 200 defense, and you can banish this card from your grave to grant all face-up Laval monsters you currently control a 400 attack boost. And this one doesn't go away at the end of the turn, so you can count on your on-theme monsters being a wee bit stronger, a wee bit longer. And while 400 isn't much, it can mean the difference if certain battle values would otherwise be a bit too close. It also kind of makes sense why this monster doesn't make the on-theme cut, too. You can't be Laval until you escape the planet's crust. Until then, you're just magma. Blacksmith. Laval Lakeside Lady is a level 3 pyro tuner monster with 200 attack and defense, and if this card is in your grave and you have 3 or more Laval monsters with different names in your grave, you can banish this card and one other Laval monster from your grave to target a set card your opponent controls and destroy that target. Oh, man, I already made the Fire Lake joke. Um. Anyway, this is another card that lets you be proactive with your grave effects, and hitting a set can mean anything from destroying a pesky trap card waiting to pounce, or a monster set on the field to resolve some wild flip effect. But since it says that target, if the card no longer becomes set, the target isn't destroyed. It's nice to have some kind of removal to get rid of bothersome cards, but like so many cards in the theme, we're saddled with just the most inconvenient effect templating. But I've gotta say, I'm loving the fire feet, very Zagreus of you. Laval Miller is a level 3 pyro monster with 300 attack and 400 defense, and when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you can send two Laval monsters from your deck to the grave. Hey, that gets you most of the way to a lot of your Laval effects that require a bunch in the grave. Having to be destroyed by battle is a little... lame, but at least you can crash it to try and force the issue. Though... I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to be a bit nitpicky here. If they were trying to be cute and make the name of the card match the colloquial name for the effect, it's off target. It's much more of a foolish effect, whereas Mill is a pretty ubiquitous term across card games that refers to sending cards off the top of your deck to the grave. And before you ask, no, I do not feel better for having spent all this time pointing it out, but the compulsion was there and I could not resist its siren song. Laval Archer is one of our latest additions. They're a level 4 pyro monster with 1000 attack and 200 defense, and if normal summoned, you can normal summon another Laval monster in addition to your normal summon or set that turn. And if this card is in your grave, you can target a fire monster you control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon this card in defense position, but it's banished if it leaves the field. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except fire monsters. Archer doesn't exactly revolutionize the strategy, but they're a great inclusion to our roster. The extra normal summon pairs well with any tuner you have in your hand to get your plays started, and if you have a field already but your levels don't quite line up to what you're looking for, you can swap any of them out with Archer from the grave to smooth things out. It works especially well if you use Archer to make a rank 4, because then it won't be banished when detached as material, and then you'll be able to do so again, making your power plays a little less of a long shot. 
Laval Blaster is a level 4 warrior monster with 1200 attack and 800 defense. And when normal summoned, if you have a Laval monster in your grave other than Laval Blaster, you can choose a number between 1 and 5, then send that many cards from the top of your deck to the grave, and Blaster gains 200 attack for each Laval monster sent to the grave to activate this effect, which is permanent. Now, hitting 5 Lavals is kind of a pipe dream, but doing so makes this a 2200 attack normal summon, which can really put in some work. And even if each card isn't a Laval, if you build your deck around really good grave effects, Blaster is still a neat setup tool for your grave. Kinda like a prototype Dante. Hey, no wonder we've got Fire Lake here. Seems like great minds really do think alike. Laval Cannon is a level 4 warrior monster with 1600 attack and 900 defense, and when normal or flip summoned, you can target one of your banished Laval monsters and special summon that target. Thank goodness a way to recycle our banished Lavals. I was getting kinda worried they'd forgotten to do that. And of all the ways to do it, this is the best one. Now you can banish some of your heaviest hitters, and because of cannon, they're no more than a normal summon away. One must imagine how cannon accomplishes this. Reviving monsters isn't really synonymous with artillery, so I like to think they just shoot the banished monster out of the barrel, kind of like one of those human cannonball acts. Laval Magma Cannoneer is a level 4 pyro monster with 1700 attack and 200 defense, and up to twice per turn you can send a fire monster from your hand to the grave to burn your opponent for 500 damage. They're a quick way to vent a lot of cards out of your hand while moving you closer to the end game. However, this is a good example of how mismatched the theme can be. Since you discard for cost, this isn't a viable way to trigger Handmaiden's effect, even though they're part of the same theme. But what does kind of work with this cannon? is a shell. Specifically, Volcanic Shell. You can pitch the first, pay the cost to get a second, then pitch it again for the full thousand damage while only losing a single card. Sure, you didn't come out of it unscathed, but hey, you gotta spend life points to take life points. Laval Flogus is a level 4 pyro monster with 1700 attack and 800 defense, and when sent to the grave, all Laval monsters you currently control gain 300 attack. And much like KN, this boost sticks around, so you won't have to worry about your opponent outlasting the increase. In fact, it's your opponent who's going to have to be worried about squaring off against one of the most powerful character classes ever known! The Fire Lumberjack! Laval Warrior is a level 4 warrior monster with 1800 attack and 500 defense, and when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the original attack of the destroyed monster, but you must have 4 or more Laval monsters with different names in your grave to activate and resolve this effect. Yo, it's good to see the Flame Wingman effect! It's a pretty good way to close out games, effectively making your attacks direct attacks against attack position monsters, while giving you a way to deal damage by destroying defense position monsters. The drawback is is that you need to have a stacked grave to even trigger it. But if things like Flogus get sent to the grave, then this modest 1800 attack normal summon can axe the competition. Prominence Molten Swordsman is a level 4 Beast Warrior? Okay with 1800 attack and 600 defense, and once per turn, during either player's turn, you can banish a Laval monster from your grave to have prominence gain 300 attack until the end of phase. Becoming a 2100 attack monster is kinda nice, especially since this monster isn't a Laval, so they aren't going to benefit from the static attack boosts we're handing out, but on the plus side, it doesn't cost any card advantage and sets up cannon for a big summon. And I want to be mad at this card for being so disjointed, but it looks so cool! The obsidian sword, the stance, the flaming aura... Oh, so cool. We gotta get to the next monster before I get stuck on this. Laval Burner is a level 5 pyro monster with 2100 attack and 1000 defense, and if you have 3 or more Laval monsters with different names in your grave, you can special summon this card from your hand. And it's not once per turn either, so you can spit as much fire as you want if you've got the grave set up. Though it's funny to me that this has less stringent requirements than Warrior's extra burn damage. Oh well, not complaining. Having 5 extra levels to work with is great, especially because it's attached to a decently sized body to help with your aggro. Also, can we talk about that hair? Mark my words, mine's gonna be just as cool one of these days. Laval Lance Lord is a level 6 warrior monster with 2100 attack and 200 defense that can be normal summoned without tributing, but if you do, it's sent to the grave during the end phase. And when this card on the field is destroyed and sent to the grave, you can target one of your banished fire monsters and add that 
target to your hand. Ooh, I do love me a good normal summonable level 6, great for Xyz and Synchro summoning alike. And the stats aren't half bad either. It's a shame that it gets sent to the grave instead of being destroyed, so it doesn't synergize with its own on destruction effect, but it's already putting in so much work otherwise, I wouldn't want them to feel burnt out. Our last main deck monster is Laval Judgment Lord, a level 7 warrior monster with 2700 attack and 1800 defense, and once per turn you can banish a Laval monster from your grave to inflict 1000 damage to your opponent, but Laval Judgment Lord can declare an attack the turn you activate this effect. So whatever Lord here can run over, it will, and if they find an obstacle they can't deal with by punching, they'll just start lobbing fireballs right at your face. So no matter what option you choose, you're gonna get pummeled by this extremely judgy lava. The lad. Alright, before we talk about this deck's main extra deck focus, let's take a detour and talk about its Xyz monsters. Lavalval Ignis is a rank 3 warrior Xyz monster with 1800 attack and 1400 defense, requiring two level 3 monsters as material. If this card attacks or is attacked during the damage step in either player's turn, you can detach an Xyz material from this card once per battle to have this card gain 500 attack until the end of the turn. So it initially goes up to 2300, but can go up to 2800 that turn if they get attacked a second time. Since the boost stays around until the end of the turn, it's not horrible, but the rank 3 pool is very competitive, so making room for Ignis here is going to be a tough sell. In stark contrast to the Vrain's Ignises, because I'm always ready to make time for these special units. Lavalval Chain is a rank 4 Sea Serpent Xyz monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach an Xyz material from this card to activate one of two effects. You either send a card from your deck to the grave, or choose a monster from your deck and place it on top of your deck. Oh boy, I remember you. You know how the rank 4 toolbox is one of the most versatile in the entire game? Well, Chain here was a huge feather in its cap, because it's a foolish burial on legs. It was broken then, a notable maneuver was allowing Necroz to set up the Jin Lock fairly easily, and it's gotten even stronger since. And if you have a draw effect set up, being able to stack a monster on top of your deck is basically the same as searching it. Imagine the combo pieces you could have with a card like this. So rightfully, Lavalval Chain has been stuck on the ban list for quite some time. Don't get me wrong, this card's off the chain, just don't let it off the list. Okay, now it's time to cover those synchros. Of note, they have all the same synchro requirements, one tuner and one or more non-tuner fire monsters. Laval Dual Slasher is a level 5 warrior synchro monster with 2400 attack and 200 defense, and this card gains effects based on the number of Laval monsters in your grave. With two or more, once per turn, if this card attacks a defense position monster, it can attack once again in a row. And with three or more, this card deals piercing battle damage. Once again, I feel like the order of things is a little off. Like, double attacks seem way better than piercing, but that incongruity works to our favor. Especially since if you only used Lavals for this card synchro summon, the double attack is already online. Send Flogus to the grave on top of that, and you've got a 2700 potential double attacker with piercing which sounds dangerously close to a modern aggro boss monster, and I expect nothing less of the legendary dual slinging slasher. Lavalval Dragon is a level 5 dragon synchro monster with 2000 attack and 1100 defense, and you can shuffle two Laval monsters from your grave into the main deck to target a card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. Once again, if you used only Lavals for this card's summon, you've guaranteed at least one activation. And since this is not a once per turn, the bigger your grave, the more removal you can bring to bear. But this is even worse resource usage than just banishing them. If you did that, at least Cannon and Lancelord could get them back, but now you'll have to go digging for them all over again, but... Oh, I can't stay mad at you, you're basically the most Trogdor out of any dragon in the game! A uh, quick, someone give Lavalval Dragon one big muscular arm. Laval the Greater is a level 6 warrior synchro monster with 2400 attack and 800 defense, and when this card is synchro summoned, you must send a card from your hand to the grave. That sounds bad on the surface, but for Laval's, that's actually pretty cool. It means our effects won't miss timing because they aren't being sent as cost, and because it's mandatory, it's very likely to be Chain Link 1. Also, if this card would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish a Laval monster from your grave instead. It's some pretty nifty protection as part of a grave enabler, but I'm gonna be honest, I always mix this card up with Armade's Keeper of Boundaries. The whole red and blue fire aura thing really trips me up. 
Levolve All Dragoon is a level 6 Dragon Synchro monster with 2500 attack and 1200 defense. And once per turn, you can add a Levolve monster from your deck to your hand, then send a Levolve monster from your hand to the grave. That's actually extremely good. Bujin Yamato is famous for this kind of effect, and any deck that loves cycling cards into the grave can benefit from it. Now, in this instance, you can't just discard any card, but if you already have the Laval you need, it's basically Foolish Burial, and if you don't have a Laval you need, but do have one you don't, this card lets you make the trade. So drag on, you crazy dragon! Laval Stenin is a level 7 Pyro Synchro monster with 2700 attack and 1800 defense. And when this card is synchro, summoned, you must send a card from your hand to the grave. Hey, it's this effect again! During either player's turn, when this card is targeted for a card effect, you can banish a Laval monster from your grave to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy the targeting card. So it's basically like greater, but instead of effect destruction protection, you get targeted negation. And it's on a slightly bigger body for only one more level. So if you're more afraid of compulsory evacuation device than Dark Hole, this monster's got you covered. Boy, I sure am glad the Vylon are here to help with these upgrades. I'm glad that's never going to end up being a problem. Oink! Levolvol Salamander is a level 7 Dragon Synchro monster with 2600 attack and 200 defense, and if this card is Synchro Summoned, oh, what a refreshing term if, you can draw two cards, then if you have a fire monster in hand, send two cards from your hand to the grave including a fire monster. Otherwise, reveal your entire hand before shuffling it into the deck. And once per turn, you can banish a fire monster from your grave to change face-up monsters your opponent controls face down, up to the number of Laval monsters you control. Now, it's not at quick effect speed, so you you can't use this as an eruption, but it also doesn't target, so it's actually an extremely effective way to blank a non-Link monster. Even if you're playing a non-Laval fire deck, you'll get to flip down at least one monster because of this monster's name. And the card cycling ain't too bad either. In fact, are we sure this isn't a Shiranui card? This feels like a Shiranui card. Everyone, please play Shiranui. Our last Synchro is Lavalval X-Lord, a level 8 warrior Synchro monster with 2900 attack and 200 defense. And when your opponent activates an effect of a monster on the field or in their hand as a quick effect, you can destroy that monster, and if you do, inflict 1000 damage to your opponent. Now where have I seen that before? And if the Synchro Summoned card is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can special summon up to 3 non-Synchro fire monsters with 200 defense from your grave in defense position, but their effects are negated. Yep, that's that's right, this is the upgraded form of Judgment Lord, and I've gotta say, I love the punishing effect. This can hit everything from unorthodox hand traps like Psyframe, to monsters who special summon themselves from the hand via effect, not some kind of summoning condition. And of course, popping an on-field monster can be great news too. Not to mention you can summon back a lot of cards once your opponent gets rid of X-Lord. It's like a mini rekindling. However, I would not recommend taking this advice into the real world because rekindling things with your ex-lord might lead to some painful outcomes. Alright, that's all our monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. And one that's particularly helpful with summoning X-Lord is Birth of the Prominence Flame, a normal spell that targets two fire monsters with 200 defense in your grave, one tuner and one non-tuner, and on resolution, you banish both, and if you do, special summon a fire synchro monster whose level equals the total level of those monsters. Alright, grave sinking! Though, unfortunately, it does not count as a synchro summon, so if you use it on X-Lord, you won't get the float. In fact, make sure you check the wording, because this means you won't get the on-summon effects of Lavalval Salamander, Black Rose Dragon, or Zoroa the Magistus Conflagrant Calamity. However, you will get the full benefits of Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon, Crimson Blader, or even Geomathmech Final Sigma if you can manage to get the levels for it. Which just goes to show that even if your monster's fire gets snuffed out, they've usually got a smoldering ember just waiting to be stoked. Molten Conduction Field is a normal spell that sends two Laval monsters from your deck to the grave, which is fantastic! A non-once-per-turn Double Foolish is exactly the kind of card the deck is looking for, and you want to make sure you get it and use it as much as possible. If you send Handmaiden with any other Laval monster, that immediately sets up and triggers their effect to send another Laval to the grave. You can send Flogus to get that boost, or set up Lakeside Lady. It's good that this is sectioned off to only Lavals, because there are dozens of decks that would go to ridiculous lengths to get this kind of effect. As it turns out, having a stocked up grave is conducive to a lot of game plans. 
Searing Firewall is a quick play spell that banishes any number of Laval monsters from your grave to special summon an equal number of Laval tokens in defense position, which are level 1 fire pyro monsters with zero attack and defense. Now, back in the day, this archetypal scapegoat could be used to defend yourself, as per the wall in the name, but could also produce small non-tuners to give you just the right levels to make bigger synchros. For instance, if you could already make a level 8 synchro, why not throw in a level 1 non-tuner to make Trishula? Well, probably because ice and fire don't play very well together, but that's besides the point. Now what it can be used for is, say it with me everyone, Link Summoning! Turning out 5 tokens can lead to a number of powerful board states all its own. So if you go through your entire play sequence and get stopped by, like, a Nibiru or something, Searing Firewall is a quick way to rebuild into something like a Fire Wall Dragon. Dust Flame Blast is a normal trap that banishes all of all monsters from your grave and destroys any number of cards on the field, up to the number of monsters banished for this card's activation. Talk about a Scorched Earth policy. You're not allowed to, like, choose a certain amount of monsters to banish. You have to turn your graveyard upside down and shake it until no Lavals are left. On the flip side, though, it doesn't target, and if you've got uh, 4 or 5 Lavals in Grave, this is easily some of the best value you can get out of a trap card that I've seen in a long time. And with the normal summon of a single cannon, you can take one of those banished monsters to rush in for some damage. So if you've got some Lavals lying around, you may want to dust them off. Molten Whirlwind Wall is a continuous trap that grants all face-up Laval monsters you control 100 attack for each Laval monster in your grave. As stated previously, a boost of a couple hundred isn't hugely impactful, but can mean a lot if it's applied to a lot of monsters. And with the way we toss Lavals into the grave, we'll be getting more than a few. Not to mention what happens when you have multiple of this card. You just have to be careful with all of the banishing effects, especially with Dust Flame Blast, as it'll all whirl wind up being squandered. Ah, oh, that joke only works when it's red, why did I say that? Our last card is Burgeoning Whirl Flame, a counter trap that has you sending a Laval monster from your hand to the grave to negate the activation of a trap card and destroying it. And if this card is in your grave, you can banish two fire monsters from your grave to add Whirl Flame back to your hand. Ooh, and that's not once per turn, very risky design. Now, the way it's supposed to be used is as a constant trap negator, though sadly at the cost of a discard every time, but you can also use this as effective discard fodder. Send this to the grave with Foolish Burial Goods, and you can banish fire monsters from your grave all the live long day to pay for nightmare activations or whatever else discards. And that part isn't even locked into Laval, so one of these days you're gonna be sick of seeing World Flame. Thank goodness it's only a common. Okay, so that's all the Laval cards, but what do we do with them? Well, we've got a lot of burn and a lot of muscle, so aggro is the way to play. We'll use our grave setups and recursion to field some massive threats, whether they be Synchro, Ixyz, or Link, carve out a huge chunk of life points, then use burn to send our opponent out in a blaze of glory. But what can we play to help them out? As stated previously, Rekindling is the power card of the deck, no questions asked. Summoning back 5 monsters with no summon restriction can lead to some wild outcomes. Generally, you want to make TG Hyper Librarian to turbo through your deck to find more extenders, as the only thing more powerful than the first Rekindling is the second, which can all culminate in the fantastic Shooting Quasar Dragon. Want some help ensuring your game plans go through? Run Fire King Avatar Arvada. It's a monster effect negation, fills your grave, and can even summon back prominence with its effect, because remember, Beast Warrior. Firebrand Hymnist is a fun summon off of Rekindling, though how much value you get out of its effect will depend on your opponent's field. Neo Flamvel Lady is quick effect grave hate that fills your grave fast, and Red Resonator is kind of like Archer, but pairs better with your non-tuners. And if you were kindling this, you get a sweet stack of life points as a bonus. Sunlight Wolf is an easy to make link monster that puts your monsters back into your hand. Not only can it grab Ash Blossom, which is also a fire for what it's worth, you can also get back Hand Maiden to trigger more foolish effects, grab Blaster for a big mill, or Cannon to summon a banished Laval. As for a silly tech pick, I've got my eyes on Loud Cloud the Storm Serpent. Now, we've got the fire components handled, but you may be asking, where's the wind material coming from? Well, from the extra deck. We've got a variety of easy-to-make Xyz and Synchro monsters that fit the bill, from Levier summoning back banished Lavals before going into a Link 2, or Stardust Charge Warrior giving us that free draw. 
From there, Loud Cloud is monster removal every turn, steadily gaining more and more attack. And if more wind monsters end up in our grave, then hey, adding some MSTs to the mix ain't bad. And that's all I've got to say about Laval. I doubt that these new pieces of support will have a huge impact on the archetype, as its mechanics are sadly rooted in design philosophies that have long since passed, but the new support is incredible, and is thankfully generic enough to be used in fire decks moving forward, giving them the tools to best whatever stands in their way by passing along the torch. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you agree that Laval is all but smothered, or is this deck about to erupt into a towering inferno? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to show your support, ring that bell so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Adam Zagedel, Nebula Navigators, Benjamin Meisner, Eric, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, Ironoclast, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Bear Sharktopus Studios, Serb, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion, James E. Picotta, Nitromo, RGS, and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue this thanks to the support of these lovely people, and if you'd like to be a part of the credits, as well as help me in my journey to help cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you want to hear me talk about another deck that loves fires and loves synchros, check out this video I did covering Shiranui. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series, Progression Polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye